Heather, how are you doing? God bless you. Tanya, how are you? Kim, God bless you. Someone said his worst mistake was taking his story to Don Lemon in The View. It's not a mistake, though. It's not a mistake he went to The View and to Don Lemon. That's where he went because those are his people. You know, those are the media um, outlets, The View and Don Lemon. These are left-wing skewed media outlets that play into victim culture, and they don't they don't judge people by content of character. They don't look for true or false. They don't look for right or wrong. They don't look for good or evil. They look to win. And for them, winning is being wicked, unfortunately. I've never seen anything like it. I've never been a partisan hack. I've never been a Republican, literally never. Not even now. I, I didn't even switch my registration, to be quite honest. I've never been one of those people that's just shilling for one side. But I've never seen anything like the spiral and the decline of People with the left-wing ideology, I don't know what it is or who they're following or why they act this way. I can't tell you. I don't know why they're letting cities like San Francisco, Los Angeles, and such just decline and spiral at such a rapid rate. It's a, it's a multitude of things. I know it's skewed priorities. When your priorities are flipped, you get different results. Like if you have a family and your top priority is safety, you get safety. If your bottom priority is safety and your top priority is like, you know, letting your kid be a degenerate, it's going to happen. So they're, they're spiraling beyond belief. But this story is wild from beginning to end. So let's start from the beginning now that everybody's here. God bless you guys. We'll take it from the top right now. And if you, if you saw my live stream yesterday, a Muslim, a Christian, and a Jew, very fun. Uh, three intelligent people, including myself, but uh, two intelligent people and me, uh, you know, very rare conversation about religion and life. So check that out before it disappears on Facebook and it'll be on YouTube. With the Bubba Wallace situation, I try not to speak out too early. Same with Jesse Smollett, because although it seems fishy, you don't want to be the person who calls them out and then they show proof and then you look like a terrible person. So I always try to wait until the evidence comes out before I speak. I do it here, I try to do it for the most part on other social media as well. You don't wanna get caught, because there are bad people. You know, there are nasty, horrible people of every race, religion, and gender. So anything's possible in this world, right off the jump. So I didn't say anything, but obviously I was like, all right, this guy's the only black guy in NASCAR. The timing of it really was suspicious to me at first, because you have to understand, I studied the Jesse Smollett case, when Jesse Smollett did what allegedly turned out to be a fake hate crime or a staged by himself hate crime, it wasn't random. And most media missed this. Most people just brushed over this. As he was doing that, Kamala Harris and Cory Booker, Democrats in politics, were pushing this anti-lynching bill. And obviously everyone's against lynching, but that's not the point. Anti-water bill, this. The bill does not necessarily mean what's in the bill. It could be the CARES Act, but it means there's $2 trillion being extracted you get what I'm saying? What else was in that bill? We don't know. No one read it. They passed it through off of the Jesse Smollett hate crime. They had all of Senate and the House, you know, green light this bill because now hate crimes of, of lynchings are back. And then they used that case to do it. And then they found out that he lied. And then nobody revisited it. And that's a, you know, a very interesting thing. And lynching has been illegal for years. So what else was in that bill? We don't know. You see pictures surfacing of Jesse Smollett with Kamala Harris, all the politicians that were pushing the bill off of what happened to him that ended up being a stage. So that was the big scoop with the Jesse Smollett situation that nobody covered. They don't just stage things randomly. They do it to accomplish certain things. I can't prove that he's working with those people, but the timing, in my opinion, as an analyst, very suspicious. So let's move to the Bubba, Small, or Bubba Wallace case. Why was I suspicious of this? Was it because I'm a hateful person? No. Do, do I think white people can't do bad things? Absolutely not. But literally a couple days before Bubba Wallace had the noose in his garage, you had the NASCAR calling to ban the Confederate flag. So, you know, this pairs perfectly with Confederates, you know, Southern people, you know, Republicans, white people, whatever, even though I don't even know the full history of the Confederates of Civil War. You understand that, but they're like, okay, they're using that as a symbol to blame the right, and then they take it out of NASCAR as if it was a huge problem to begin with, and then just a couple days later, there's a noose in the only black guy's garage. 
could be a real thing. Didn't deny it, didn't come out and call him a liar. But the timing, like the Jesse Smollett timing, was wildly, wildly suspicious. And I kind of knew it was a lie to begin with, but I didn't say it, I gotta wait for the evidence. So I actually spoke up before I found out he was wrong because I'm just, it was so obvious I had to speak out like yesterday before it happened or two days ago. I watched him on The View and his body language was horrible and his response was horrible. He was fidgeting, looking around, he looked uncomfortable. He just looked like a straight up liar. And then he said, how dare anyone question me? Like he was, he was saying that anybody who wanted to see proof and anyone who didn't believe him was a horrible person and how dare they? And that's the first sign of a liar. I don't care if you're black, white, Hispanic, just to be quite honest, his father's whiter than snow, whiter than I am. And to be honest, on a, on a sunny day, I'm not even sure that Bubba, Bubba Wallace is that much darker than I am. He's a pretty light skinned guy because he's half white. Not, not about skin color, I'm just saying it's like, do I have the victim card over his father because I'm part Hispanic or well, what's the deal now? Anyway, so I hear him on The View. If something happens to me, whether I'm black, whether I'm white, whether, whether I'm whatever, I would know why people would want evidence. I would understand, yeah, I understand why you might not believe me. Jesse Smollett just got caught. There's a lot of fake hate hoaxes. There's a whole website, hundreds of them from different ethnicities. This happens all the time. Fake things, you know, people doing Nazi symbols and you find out it was the person, business owner who did it. Like crazy stuff happens. You wouldn't even believe it. So point I'm getting to is whether he was right or wrong, there's no situation where an honest person would say, how dare you want to see picture evidence of the photo? For me, I would say, I wanna show you picture evidence of the photo because I know you're not gonna believe me. I wanna show you without a shadow of a doubt that I'm not a liar. Bubba Wallace did the opposite. He said, fidgeting, looking around, and said, anybody's a bigot or a horrible person that, does, that wants to see proof. So I called him a liar two days ago. I don't like to jump the gun, but I'm like, obviously this guy's lying. It's like, don't you dare expect a picture. Just believe what I say. And I'm like, what a terrible person. So it comes out that it was, you know, a rope. It was not, uh, we'll, we'll get into it later because I know it's still controversial, but it turns out it was a pull string rope that's been there since 2019 before Bubba Wallace was there. So I took a look at it and I'm looking at the thing. I'm like, oh, all the, all the garages have these pull ropes. And if you're good at knots, you got to understand there's multiple types of knots. There's a slip knot. Slip knots are very dangerous. Slip knots are on yo-yos. They can, you know, s strangulate your finger. A slip knot on a garage would never work because if you pulled it, it would pull down to your hand. You ever done a yo-yo? It sticks to your hand. A noose, it sticks to your neck. It kills you. It's a terrible thing. So if it was a noose pull, it wouldn't work. I mean, there would have been dozens of people who had had their wrists, you know, messed up and their fingers messed up because that's what a pull string is. And then there's other ropes that look like it that aren't slip knots. Slip knots pull, regular, you know, tough knots to pull stuff, they don't move. So it, it wasn't a slip knot, I can almost guarantee that. And then I found out where he got it from. It's his extremely white father, not that skin color matters, but his father's whiter than a ghost. And uh, you know, he's gonna play the victim card, his dad who's like three shades whiter than I am. Listen to what his father says. Once they found out it was a rope, he starts saying that they shouldn't have ropes like that there. This family is like victim culture, like insanity. L listen to what he says. Everything is, is just being blowed up out of proportion. I mean, what's what's the symbol of a noose? It's death. I mean, I don't care who put it there or what the reason is there for. If there as a garage pull, it's something to be able to pull the, a rope to pull the garage down. But, you know, what was going through the person who did it in 2019 or whatever, I mean, it's just, and it's been there that long. And my thing is, why hasn't somebody noticed it since then? So he says, he admits, this is Bubba Wallace's father. His father admits that it was a garage pull, but instead of just admitting they're wrong, this is what pathological liars do. This is what horrible people do. Like I said, with the view interview, an honest person says, hey, I know everybody's not gonna believe me. The left wing might not believe me, the right wing not, whatever. I'm gonna show you proof. I'm not a liar, I'll show you proof. Bubba Wallace did the opposite. He said, how dare you ask for a picture evidence? You're a horrible person for asking that. And then his father, you could see where he gets it from, his white father uh, says, 
you know, uh, you know, yeah, it was a garage pull, but why is a noose, why is a garage pull that looks like a noose there in the first place? What were they thinking of? How dare they put a symbol of oppression as a garage? It's not a noose, bro. A noose is a slip knot. This is a small rope that, that has a, I believe there's a, a name for the knot. I'll find it out real quick because I looked it up just, just out of curiosity. It's called a, excuse me. I'm not a Boy Scout, so I don't know. It's called a non-slip cred loop knot, and it looks exactly like that. So here's how wicked these people are. So you heard him go on The View, Bubba Wallace, and say, how dare all these racists or horrible people, how dare they not believe me? His father, after they found out it was actually a rope that's been there since 2019, he says, yeah, it might be a rope, but it's still a noose rope, and how dare them put a noose rope? What's going on through the racist guy's head who made the noose rope, even if it wasn't for my son? The white father said that. And then NASCAR puts out a photo of the rope and they zoom in on it and make it look like a literal noose because they get so close to it and do an angle that it looks huge. Guys, this is basic like, you know, 101. I can make this look like the size of a mountain. Even though it's a pen, you just put it at the right angle. If I put it close, it looks huge. If I put it small and put it up to my hand, look, look how small it looks. But if I put, it's huge. Guys, they made it look enormous in the in the picture that they, they released, but if you see it in context, it's way too small to fit around somebody's neck. It, you could barely fit your hand in it because one, it's not a noose. Two, it's most likely not a slip knot. If it was a slip knot, people would have been hurting their hand on it for the last year, and you could see it's exactly what a non-slip cray knot looks like, which is a strong knot to pull things down with or to pull different equipment with. It's not everyone's knot, but they made, someone made that knot. I mean, it's so simple. So I can't even show you the picture, but the one picture, it looks massive because they're right next up to it. You look at it in unison with some guy, it's like it, it's, it, your, your hand could barely fit in it. It's just enough for your hand. No, no one's head on the planet could even fit in it. So these people are just wicked, wicked liars from top to bottom, from NASCAR to Bubba to his father. No offense. I know they're a little bit embarrassed, but this is unfortunately how they operate with the jesse smollett case what happened was he did that kamala harris cory booker said oh my god look at that passed a bill on the back of what happened you found out it didn't happen and no one cared everybody made excuses for it very few people followed up on it they accomplished their goal it's the same thing with you see the black lives matter protests there were tens of thousands of people in the street and then now there's a rise in cases, but there's actually a decline in deaths. That's good. You want less deaths, more cases. And I'm going to get into that too. Think about where the deaths were in coronavirus. They were during the lockdowns. Are lockdowns really healthy for people? Now that there's less lockdowns, the cases are going back up. The deaths are going down because immune system, social interaction, I mean, it's not healthy to keep people from society. And I think they'll find out in the long run that that happened. But anyway... The point I'm trying to get to is they'll they'll never tell the truth. These people are like pathological liars. They're like, well, it wasn't the tens of thousands of protesters that raised the cases. It was the restaurants with 10 people in them. That's how the cases spread. They can't tell the truth. It's the people on the beach in Florida. They can't tell the truth. Bubba Wallace said, how dare you question me? Can't tell the truth. His father said, oh yeah, well, you were right. It was a garage rope three days before people before the FBI even investigated, people already debunked it on Twitter. People that I follow, they said, this is a garage pull. And I'm like, oh yeah, that makes sense. And then the FBI said it three days later. And then the father said, well, it's a garage pull, but shaped like something that's oppressive. He can't tell the truth. He can't admit he was wrong. He can't move on. Bubba, you know, he said it was a little embarrassing, but he said, you know, I'm glad what we did and change is going to come. Yeah, you're glad what you did. You passed your political and racial agenda. You got a, you know, worldwide attention. You got on news networks. You got all the NASCAR people to stand behind you as you're like the hero when you're not even winning a, a sport. And this is, this is the reason I'm talking about this. It's a, in a culmination of all the problems we have in our country now. The participation trophy culture you've raised kids and this guy got raised by a white father not a black father but you know raised by your liberal you know whatever white father to tell you even if you can't win a race you can't come in first second or third you're the hero because you're the victim because i don't know because you're have lighter skin than me barely barely he's not even really that dark but whatever it's like 
you're the hero just because you are. And there's a rope there, even though it's not what I said it was, now they get to do a parade for you. So they do a big parade, not because he won a race, not because he came in second, third, fourth, or fifth, because someone lied to him at NASCAR and told him that a rope that wasn't a slip knot was a noose, and he bought it, and they all went to the press with it, and then after it happens, the father still won't say it's not, and then NASCAR puts out a selected edited video of a close-up to make it look bigger than it really is to fearmonger off it. These people are wicked liars and deceivers. They just can't tell the truth. They just can't drop it, and they're never gonna stop. And, uh, you know, I don't know what they're gonna do at this point. These people are like brainwashed beyond belief. It's it's just nuts. Like, if, I, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. It's not a big deal. Like, man, I messed up. They can't ever admit because their whole political and social philosophy is all backwards. So if they admit one thing, their whole world comes crumbling down. They're living in alternate inverted lens reality where everything they believe is like basically a lie. For example, I believe in racial equality. I don't believe in bigotry. I don't believe in anti-white racism. I don't believe in anti-black racism. I believe in treating people like individuals, but I also believe in free speech and the ability to discuss different groups and trends and tribes and such. I believe in all that. However, they say they believe in that, but then they're passing laws to say that, you know, you can't, you have to wear a mask unless you're black, then you can't wear a mask. Or, you know, they, they can't let you live normally. They're, they're the racist ones. They're the ones that discriminate. They want to hire only certain people of certain quotas and certain ethnicities at their, their uh, you know, at their company. They can't treat people by content of character. They can't treat people with integrity. They can't just say, yeah, you're half black. I, I don't even want to call him fully black because he's so light skinned. He looks like a white guy, but it's not important. I'm just saying it's like, I'm part Hispanic. Am I, am I supposed to walk around and be like, I am, you know, everybody owes me. I'm, I'm part Hispanic. It's like, he's not even dark. There's people five times darker than him that don't complain. Like, why does he have the victim card? Whatever. You know, just because you're in the sport, you still have to win. You know, you still have to be good at, at the thing you do. You still have to be honest. Like, your skin color, your religion, your ethnicity, your gender doesn't give you a free range to just be a wicked person, but that's what they're teaching the kids. They're teaching you if your skin color is this color, you're a wicked person regardless. If your skin color is this or your gender is this, you can do no wrong as long as you buy into our political philosophy, you can do no wrong. If you're like, you know, Candace Owens or Larry Elder or something, you know, you go against us politically, yeah, then we'll destroy your life and we'll call you a white supremacist. However, if you're this, you can be on this side. We'll let you do anything. Burn, loot, lie, steal, cheat. Anything's fine as long as you believe in our uh, political philosophy. But on the other side, don't cross there. So it's really just intimidation and wicked tactics to get people to vote for Democrat. They don't really like black people. They like black people who push their social and political agenda. And if you don't, they're your worst enemy. They will come crashing down at you because they don't want free thinkers. They don't want optimistic people who work hard and work smart and will tell the truth. You know, people who, you know, against all odds, make something of themselves and don't do it off of a victim culture or lying about an event and having your white father lie about the event. They do it off of just rising to the top, the cream of the crop, and just outperforming everybody. And luckily, this country's great where they don't care. I watched a documentary. I don't even want to say the name because it's kind of a slur word, but Uncle T.O.M. was a documentary a bunch of conservatives put together, black conservatives. I watched it last night. It's phenomenal. You, you see the story of Brandon Tatum, Larry Elder, you know, Thomas Sowell, um, Herman Cain, and Herman Cain talks about in, in the documentary, he says, I never had time to be a victim because I was working too hard. And he said, you know, I worked hard enough. And he said at a, at a company I was at, Herman Cain said they were giving a white guy more money than me. And Herman Cain said, he went to his boss and said, why are you giving that guy more money than me? And the boss said, we're giving him more money because he has a master's degree and you don't have a master's degree. So instead of lying or complaining or running to the press or crying for racism, Herman Cain got his master's degree and then he got a job and had 20 white guys working under him. And then people there told him, hey, you made me look at black people differently. So that's how you beat racism. If people are racist, you become such a great person, you shatter the narrative of what they thought you were, or you work so hard and you realize most people are not racist. Most people are looking for quality. 
but the left wing does the opposite. They don't want the Herman Keynes. They don't want the Ben Carsons. They don't want the Brandon Tatums turning from, you know, a, a hip hop artist, you know, cultural, you know, uh, uh, urban community type kid into a police officer or somebody that is strong and wants to actually be, you know, not a victim. They hate that. And it's like, that's actually the future. That's how you become successful from anywhere. That's the mindset that leads you to success. And when you do that, the world becomes a better place, but they want to fill their quotas of certain ethnicities, certain genders, certain sexualities. And the type of people that fill those voids are people like Bubba Watson and all these other people or whatever his name, Bubba Wallace. Bubba Watson's the golfer, but you know, who just think everybody's out to get me, that rope's out to get me, this sport's out to get me. And it's really, really counterproductive. And I'll tell you why. I'm mostly white European, you can see that. I'm part Hispanic, but if I pull up to a, a sport, say I'm playing basketball and it's like no white people are on the team, I'm the only white dude on the team, I'm working extra hard to prove to people, you know, I can make it. I'm not looking for a handout because I'm the odd man out. I'm looking to be like, I'm so good, there's a reason I'm here. If I was the only white guy in an all black sport and I, I lied about or NASCAR lied to me about a fake hate crime and I made everybody do a celebration just for me, not because I won, not because I'm the best player on the team, not because I'm a good person, not because I'm a nice guy to be around, just because of my skin color and I thought a rope was something else and I made everybody stand around me as I'm the hero in this little participation trophy award for you know Marxism and then I find out I'm lying, I would expect the entire team to hate me. I would expect black people to not like me, particularly. Why would they? You know, I just, I'm the only one there. I'm the only white guy there. And I just lied and staged, a, or at least bought into a whole event that made everybody stand around and celebrate me off of a lie or a misunderstanding. That's how you make people hate you. That's how you do your race a disservice. And it's, in my opinion, a huge disservice he's doing because he's not even fully black. I mean, put him next to an African, he looks white. He looks like he looks like my white Irish friend. I didn't even know he was black when I watched the interview. I'm like, this dude is a really white, which is fine. It's like, embrace your heritage. You know, I'm not, I don't say I'm 100% Hispanic. Like I say, my grandma came from Puerto Rico. You know, my grandpa came from Poland. My grandpa came from Italian. Like I'm blessed. I'm grateful for my Puerto Rican-ness. I listen to big pun, you know what I'm saying? My Italian, I eat chicken parmesan. You know, my Polish, I eat kielbasa. I embrace all my heritage and I'm like, you know, God bless all my grandparents and grand grandmothers. I, I'm not ashamed of who I am. It's like, you got Colin Kaepernick and Bubba Wallace, they're half white. Bubba Wallace looks whiter than Kaepernick, but they're, they're like embarrassed of their half their race or something. And they just like pretend, it's like, embrace it. Embrace the kielbasa. Embrace the chicken parmesan. You know, if your dad's Irish, embrace Whatever it is Irish people do, it's okay. We can all get along. How, how can we all get along if you can't even get along with yourself? You're mad at half your body. Like, it's, it's, a, it's, it's something going on there. You know, it, I don't know. If I was half Hispanic or, and half white, I wouldn't speak on behalf of the whole Hispanic community. I'm not gonna lie. If I was half black and half white, I don't know that I would speak on behalf of the black or the white community like it's my thing. It's like being from a different town. If I'm from you know, New York, and I moved to Pennsylvania for like three years or five years, I'm not gonna act like I own the whole city, you know, like this is my city. It's like, bro, you just got here. You're not even, you know, you're not even born and raised here. So I don't know, I think it's a little goofy to begin with, but I guess that's what gets $100 million Nike contracts and, you know, while they do Chinese labor. And uh, I guess that's what gets you praised in NASCAR, even um, just to be honest, the most right-wing sport is now a snowflake sport. And I, I personally think, just to be quite frank, and then we'll get to some questions and comments, I think it's, I think it's part of the, the Marxist, uh, you know, really backlash that we're seeing in this country. And it's not a conspiracy theory. The heads of the movement that are shifting our culture right now, Black Lives Matter, they're admitted trained Marxists. It's just a fact. But I think it's part of it is a humiliation ritual. Basketball, obviously baseball, you got every sport under the sun. Just to be quite frank, what's the whitest sport in the country? NASCAR is such a white sport, I don't even watch it. Uh, you know, I made a joke yesterday. I said, you know, this is tough for me because I used to not like NASCAR. 
and I still don't, and it's just tough. You know, or like I used to not care about NASCAR, and I still don't care, and that's tough for me. You know, I never really cared about NASCAR, but look at the demographics of NASCAR. It's the whitest sport on the planet, you know? So first they take away the Confederate flag, which I'm guessing was not even a real problem or thing that was going on. Like flags were flying up, people were getting punched in the face. So like there's probably, I, I, I haven't heard of a single story of violence or, or, or harm at a NASCAR event in like 30 years, but whatever, besides the racers themselves. Okay, so they get rid of that. Okay, whatever. I don't even think anyone cared. All right, now you have the noose and the one guy there. This is like a humiliation ritual. This is, I don't know that he himself knows what he's doing, but I mean, these type of coincidences, it's like COVID-19. I'm supposed to think that's just a random coincidence. The economy gets destroyed. And then all of a sudden, you know, it gets better. And then tens of thousands of people are in the streets and then the cases go up and then they blame restaurants and Trump supporters and right-wing domestic terrorism as left-wing and, you know, nonpartisan just degenerates are tearing down every city. You know, LA and San Francisco look like a trash dump. Literally 80% of the city is like a crackhead trash heroin dump. And they don't talk about the right-wing terrorism is the number one threat. Uh, you know, it's the, it's the restaurants opening that have the more cases. And for the record, before we get to questions, more cases now, less deaths. During the shutdown, I said this in a debate with my, my buddy Nuance Bro, and he thought it was the craziest thing. He's like, that's a crazy theory. But it's like, you look at the lockdown in Italy, you look at the lockdown in America, you look at the lockdown in the UK, the death count being extremely high is completely lines up with when the lockdown was. And this is further proving my theory right, now we have more cases in the country, so we should have more deaths, right? We actually have less deaths. Why do we have less deaths? It could be because of doctors and stuff, but it also could be there's actual health effects to being stuck inside. Not working out is not healthy. Not having a routine in a job is one way to be very unhealthy. Eating more, not exercising as much, not getting as much sunlight, social interaction, you know, actually getting out and boosting your immune system by interacting with people, this is not a theory. It's only a conspiracy theory if you're some sort of pseudo-intellectual brainwashed chump who thinks that that's a, oh no, sitting inside for months is really healthy for the average person and locking elderly people inside is really great for their health. No, it's really not. You know, there's multiple studies about how that's not healthy and it's a basic common sense. If you walk and get out all the time, have a job, a nine to five, a family, a career, uh, you know, you go to like lunch meetings and then you're not allowed to do that for three months. I'm not fully convinced that Trump is wrong, the media is wrong. I'm not convinced they're all wrong. They're all saying we saved millions of lives with the lockdown. Trump says it, CNN says it, they both lie about each other. It's like WWE. <laughs> I'm out here suggesting that it's very possible that if you look at the lockdown, that's when all the deaths were. As soon as the lockdown was lifted, there were no, there was no death spike. There was no hospitalization spike. The whole thing was an exaggeration from the beginning. So that's why we shut down. It's not to stop the spread of the virus. We shut down because we thought there was a massive death count and there was gonna be a massive death percentage and a, uh, you know, an overwhelming of the hospitals more likely. You can't stop the spread of a virus. I mean, you, unless you're bubble boy and everybody just wraps themselves and never interacts again, but that's not healthy. It's the same as, as a kid. If you don't let your kid play at all and do anything, you keep him in his room for 20 years and then he goes out to college, he's gonna like break out in hives because he's not equipped for the viruses in the real world. I mean, it's science 101. These people are such liars and they do things like this, the Bubba Wallace situation, the, you know, the, the riots, the looting, the protests, to get people's mind off of what they just did. And they've brainwashed and dumbed down the average person that they don't even realize it. They had the government shut down the economy. This is the dream of every wicked person that would ever want to destroy America. Shut down the economy, destroy social cohesion, you know, ruin the job market, make you stay inside like you're some sort of autonomous AI robot that can't live a life. Put something on your face, you know, you got plastic barriers in front of your safe. Guys, this is an Orwellian nightmare. And 90, 80, 70, 60, 50% of people they don't even notice it took one event for them to go in the streets and smash them. I'm angry now at Trump and Republicans because things bad happened in Democrat areas. Then be mad at them, be mad at Minneapolis, be mad at the Democrat mayor, the Democrat attorney general, the Democrat prosecutor, 
the Democrat everything in Minneapolis. You're mad at who? San Francisco, Los Angeles, Democrat areas, Democrat cities. They're mad at themselves. These people are, oh, oh, Trump did it. It's like, no, you're doing everything. All the deaths, the highest death count are in New York. Now California is rising, but it's also, it's also a, a testing game. The more people you test, the more people are gonna have it. If you're testing people and you're saying anybody with COVID-19 died from COVID-19, you're gonna have an astronomically high death count that's over, over uh, inflated. It's the same with for common cold. Tens of millions of people get the common cold every year. Millions of people die every year in America. But they know when someone dies with the common cold, they know they didn't die from the common cold. So you look at the count of common cold deaths in America, they probably don't have a count at all because no one cares because they're not counting for it because they know that that doesn't kill people. So with, with COVID-19, how they're counting is anybody with COVID-19 and they know it's widespread, they know millions of people probably have it asymptomatically. They know it's a virus that most people are literally affected so little that they don't even get tested because they don't know they have it. And they're saying anybody who died, they said George Floyd had coronavirus at one point. Everyone is probably gonna get coronavirus at one point, just like everyone gets the common cold, which if you look up common cold, I believe is part of the coronavirus family. These are highly, you know, viral uh, viruses. They're highly spread, I don't know, disease, virus, you know, it changes once it gets in you, but you get the point I'm making? Their death count, if they counted common cold deaths like they counted coronavirus deaths, you could say 50,000 people died of common cold. No, 50,000 people died with common cold, but we have the common sense to know that there were other factors. You die of a stroke with COVID, it was the COVID. If you died of a gun attack, it was the COVID. If you died with five comorbidities, you're 84 and you were on your deathbed for two years on oxygen and you died with COVID, it was COVID. That's literally how they're counting. So more testing equals more cases. You know, asymptomatic people will drive down the death rate because they're not factoring that in. And then you got how they're counting the death rate. This whole, this whole year has been a total sham. They've destroyed society off of multiple, and most people don't even realize it. The right wing's fighting. You got these intellectual right wing conservatives. They're like, oh, the right wing won't talk about the police brutality. It's like, yeah, we'll talk about police brutality. Police are corrupt. You know, the unions protect bad police. We can talk about it, but it's like they just buy into the Marxist talking points and then they talk for two weeks. Like, oh, this thing that, guys, they're destroying the country all over the place, every institution. The Supreme Court doesn't even work anymore. They're destroying NASCAR because it's the one sport that conservatives actually like overwhelmingly over liberals. So now that's a snowflake sport. They're ruining everything. And I, it's hard for me to think this is random, but you have the left wing just totally delusional. They'll, they'll buy into any sort of narrative. And then you have the right wing just playing their games. Like, oh, today's Juneteenth. Guys, if they cared about Juneteenth, they would have done it for the last... 60 years, no offense, I don't care about most holidays. I'm sorry, I don't care about Columbus Day. I don't care about Juneteenth. I don't, I care about Easter, Christmas is cool, Thanksgiving's nice. Besides that, I don't know, 90% of holidays, I don't even notice. We were like, it's Memorial Day. What does that mean? The pools are open, you got a barbecue, then I care. Fourth of July is fun because there's food. If there wasn't food, I wouldn't even care, no offense. But you know, it's like Mike Pence is like, Juneteenth is, it's like, guys, you're just buying into all, they, they don't actually care about Juneteenth. They don't care about the story and what happened. They care about what they're doing now and they can now have a day to reflect and push a certain narrative and skew history with, instead of actually educating on people on the history, they're gonna skew it, make it look like they're the heroes, you're the bad guy, and just drill this victim mentality into kids' heads for the next 20 years so they could get them to vote for them. So both parties are like useless at this point the left is wicked and the right is just like, I don't know what they do. I guess them being there is like half the, the, the value of it, but it's nutty. All right. God bless you guys. God bless your family. I'm going to answer some questions that I'm going to take off in a little bit. I appreciate you. Someone said, I had the flu in early 2019, was ill for eight weeks. There's some vicious, vicious flus that have been going around for the last couple of years for sure. Jeff said, I like all my paid holidays. Yeah, paid holiday is a good way to go. Someone said, Carol said, how do we get our places of worship open? I don't know. I mean, I, I would think you just got to open. I, I don't know. I mean, it's so obvious what they're doing, like closing churches, uh, Marxist protests allowed, closing massive institutions, 
they're just, it's a controlled demolition on this entire country. And I don't, I don't know. I, just why is it closed to begin with? I don't, why are they still closed? I don't know. If everybody opened up, they wouldn't be able to do anything. When Black Lives Matter and, you know, a bunch of Marxists and, and random people who get their, you know, activism from LeBron James and rap blogs, you know, when they were in the streets, people just let them do it because they were outnumbered. I'm not saying to do that. I don't agree with what they were doing, but it's like, I don't know. What did Shelly Luther do? She opened up her nail salon got arrested, got bailed out, got a bunch of money on GoFundMe and kept it moving. I, I don't understand. I, I, I would say, look at the look at the Hasidic Jews in uh, New York City. They're just doing whatever, I don't know. They're getting arrested and just cutting open fences and stuff. I have respect for them for doing that. It's like, why, why would they listen to whatever his name is? Someone said inflammatory disease in kids from COVID was all over the news now a month ago was not a peep. What's up? John, I was watching the news two months ago, uh, just checking it out. The news is wicked and disgusting. If you look at the actual death rate of kids, it's so minuscule, it's in insane. It's probably worse to give kids macaroni and cheese than it is for COVID. I'm not saying for sure, I'm just making a joke, but it was like a non-existent thing. So realistically, you could probably open up schools and let your kids do stuff and do events. So they needed a narrative to scare parents into thinking their kids were gonna die. So they did a few reports where they said, people are getting crazy rashes in New York City or something. And even in the news, they said they couldn't prove that it was COVID. It could have been a million things. It could have been a, an a alternate reaction to medication. It could have been something totally different. They didn't know, but they pushed the narrative that kids were just getting wrecked by COVID, maybe, possibly. These are wicked, disgusting, demonic people that just never stop lying and deceiving. I mean, they've given their soul over to the devil. I don't know what else to really tell you. It's like, they don't want positivity. They don't want truth. They pushed this massive thing that they couldn't back up. It disappeared because it was never true to begin with. It had nothing, probably nothing to do with COVID-19. And same with the Lancet study. People think, well, these are the experts. Guys, Lancet is one of the most trusted names in infectious diseases. They got caught with a fake thing with hydroxychloroquine. Why were they wrong about hydroxychloroquine, guys? Why do you think the Lancet study was wrong about hydroxychloroquine? One of the biggest flops they've ever had in their you know recent existence. It's because President Trump said hydroxychloroquine works. And these wicked demonic people don't like the president, they don't like you, they don't like certain people based on their skin color, they're wicked, wicked people. So they then just lie about data, lie about stats, lie about science, make stuff up, destroy people who tell the truth, put out their study, and they got caught. This is the experts, these are the experts. They got caught, read the article in Guardian. They falsified data to make hydroxychloroquine look worse than it was, it's not random. This, this didn't just, oh, they messed up one. No, it's because Trump liked hydroxychloroquine and they couldn't have him being right about everything. These people are wicked. They will sabotage the economy. They will sabotage your health. They will destroy everything. These are evil, evil people. They don't care. There's video footage of them admitting that they'll do this. I'll, I'll, I'll play a clip. You think I'm joking? Like people are like, no, they, I mean, I get they don't like Trump, but they would never lie about that. There's no low these people won't go. This is Bill Mayer last year when Trump's economy was doing good. You have to understand with an economy as strong as it was, virtually no chance of Trump to lose and they know this. So here's what Bill Mayer said when Trump's economy was good, knowing he couldn't win the election for his wicked friends, the Democrats. Can I ask about the economy? Because this economy is going pretty well. We have to, what? Why, why is that funny? Hey, it is going well for now. For now, right. That's my, thank you. That's my question. <laughs> is, like, the, I feel like the bottom has to fall out at some point. And by the way, I'm hoping for it because I think one way you get rid of Trump is a crashing economy. Yeah. So please, bring on the recession. Yeah. Sorry if that hurts people, but it's either root for a recession or... So he admitted, Bill Mayer admitted on his show, he said, Trump's economy is doing well because it obviously was. It was one of the greatest economies in the history of mankind. And the guy, his little side, oh, well, uh, uh, he doesn't want to admit Trump's economy is good because these people are liars. And then he says, well, I, the only way to get Trump out of here is for the economy to go bad. Let's listen to it again. Pretty clear. Like the bottom has to fall out at some point. And by the way, I'm hoping for it because I think one way you get rid of Trump is a crashing economy. These people 
I, it's like when pe people think it's a conspiracy theory, they would never do that. Guys, they're admitting on television, I would rather the economy get destroyed so I could win an election. So when they do this type of stuff, there's no rhyme or reason. Oh, you need to wear a face mask, but black people don't need to wear a face mask. Uh, you can't protest or else we're going to shut down your video, but uh, they can protest. Uh, you can't run your business, uh, but I can run my business. You know, Amazon can run, but your mom and pop should. These are evil evil, wicked, sick, disturbed, lost, foul, vile people. They need your prayers. They need your prayers now more than ever because they have demons just flowing through them. There's, why else would you lie about so much stuff? And you see, they, they feel emboldened in their lies. What I predict, and then we'll get to more questions, is at a certain point, the people are gonna leave them for their wicked ways. Let them have their cities. Let them have their little wicked areas, their little Sodom and Gomorrah villages, and let them see what happens when the millions of people who actually hold their society together are leave and the degenerates just take over. They're gonna run each other over. Cancel culture, you're canceled, you're canceled, you're not progressive enough. It's gonna look like Chaz, the whole city. So let them have their Sodom and Gomorrah. Joke's on them. I don't want that to happen. I would love to fix the, but if I try to fix the city, they call me racist or sexist or uh, oh, you don't like these people. It's like, no, I want to clean the streets so, you know, kids don't have to walk through like heroin addicts every day. I don't know. Or we could just let them run the city and it could be trash. It's up to you, but that's not really my thing. So I'm, I'm going to leave, but you could have that. Yeah, that's, I'm sure that's really good. And they're all hiding and in the hills or moving anyway. They're like, yeah, we don't, they don't, they don't travel the streets that everyone lives on. They live way up. People need to wake up. I, I heard a story today. My buddy said that his uh, his mom listened to a Sam Harris podcast and she realizes the media is lying. She was watching CNN two weeks ago and she listened to Sam Harris and now she realizes they're lying. That's a good step, you know? So there's, there's a lot of work to be done by everybody. It's going to take a concerted effort. You, me, everyone to not be mean, not be nasty, not be hateful, angry, scream at people at the top of your lungs. You know, show people the light, show people the truth. And when enough good souls break away from these wicked people and the wicked media, you know, they'll collapse on, on themselves and they'll stop, you know, having power. So that's the real awakening. It's not even Trump versus Biden or right versus left. It's understand who these people are. Understand what lengths they will go to achieve power. These are not good people. Thank you, Jamie. I appreciate it. Thank you, David. God bless you. Thank you, Jackie. God bless. Sherry said the golden rule, treat others how you want to be treated. A thousand percent. And that's what you're seeing. It's on both wings. Don't get me wrong. There's bad people on both sides. But the left has lost that rule. They don't want to treat... Listen, even if there's a communist psycho kid who's not harming anybody, but he's like a little wicked, I pray for that person and I try to get through to them in a nice way. You know, I realize that they're lost and hurt. These people are out for blood. They don't believe in the golden rule. They think, uh, you know, they, they, they're they racist, they're hateful, they want to segregate and, and, and make you wear a mask if you're a certain skin color, they want to demonize your kid because of the color of his skin, and then they want to turn around and march and say anybody who disagrees with them is a horrible person as they're actively admitting that they're pushing Marxism, which is a, an ideology uh, that has led to tens of millions of people being killed. It It's not hard to figure out why communism doesn't work. Let's do it on an example. In theory, and here's the big lie that they've given to people. Where does communism work? Everybody shares. Everybody works. Everyone shares. It works in a family. Why does it work in a family? Because everyone plays their part. The mom, the dad, the kids, whatever the family is. You know, everyone's got their role. Communism doesn't even work in a family. If you got a kid stealing, doing stuff, doing negative stuff, you have to put your kid in line. So communism doesn't work even on the smallest unit unless you have a strong household where people aren't degenerate criminals. Now let's move to friends and family and neighborhood. Socialism would work if everybody loves each other, everybody gets along, everybody works, and you make sure that the bad apples get held accountable. It's the only way socialism or communism is going to work. What are the socialists or communists like now in the left wing? 
they don't believe in accountability. They don't believe in a, a golden rule. They don't believe in law and order. They don't believe in keeping the bad apples accountable. They believe from a bottoms up. There's no way their version of communism and socialism works. Socialism works when you have the golden rule of law and order and everybody uh, contributes. It doesn't even work on a commune with 50 people. So what do you see in Chaz? Chaz is a microcosm of what socialists and communists want. You know, it, just no, please, no this, we'll all do it. But who are these people? These aren't the best people. These aren't strong, smart, intelligent, rational people. Not on the whole, some of them are, some of them aren't. But you have some of the most degenerate, lost, confused, useless, productive list people, you know, just dragging other people down. And that's, you know, businesses in the area and such. So that's why it won't work. And they this is the big trick. I'll just be quite honest in America. They, the socialists and communists are not allowed to love the country. If you look at you know, Hitler's regime in Nazi Germany, they were national socialists. They were not capitalists or they were not uh, you know, right-wing ideology. And in some senses, they were into socialism. But because Nazism has gotten such a bad rap and has been demonized, uh, rightfully so, people think you can't love your country and be a socialist and a communist. They say, well, you know, that's national socialism. I'm just, socialism or communism doesn't work if you hate your country, you hate your people, you hate half of the country, you hate this race, you hate, there's no way socialism can work that way. The only way it works is if you like who you're around. You know, you can't be a communist in a family that you hate, then it doesn't work. It doesn't work on a city scale or, so because of that, they've really skewed perception of people. And, you know, I, I talk about World War II quite often now because I find it interesting that um, so many things have been uh, left out. Like, we worked with the communists. So I say the communists won the war. Yeah, America won. But we worked with, what, the Soviet Union or Russia who killed God knows how many people with their wicked, you know, Marxist Bolshevik ideology. So that, I, I guess, and then we took, you know, some of the Germans into America. The whole thing reeks of, of, of a, a weird situation, but you get what I'm saying? It's like these people, they're, they're not going to get to the, where they think they're going to get. So at a certain point, you just got to leave them alone and uh, give them a chaz or something. It's like a homeless unit. Like you guys do that over here and we're going to function over here. Someone said the businesses in Chaz are suing the city for abandoning them. Rightfully so. I mean, Seattle, Los Angeles, New York City, I love those places, but like they've turned into dumps. Look at Seattle. There's a whole documentary, Seattle's Dying. It's a dump. I mean, Los Angeles, I've lived there for eight years. It's a dump. I mean, it's disgusting. It's every area that was decent is getting worse. Every area was that, that was bad. Yeah, there were times in the 90s, I'm sure it was worse, and in the 80s, but... The city is like a trash dump. No one's smart enough or honest enough to, you know, clean it up. And then they hate like Orange County. They're like the neo-Nazis over in Orange County. Uh, oh yeah, they're so horrible in Huntington Beach because they actually clean up the streets and people don't trash their area. And even though it's not super high income, it's not, it's not crime rate. And yeah, they're terrible. They're terrible for not wanting you to come and smash all their businesses. Horrible people there. I mean, God forbid they uh, don't let their city go to complete filth and degeneracy like uh, Los Angeles. What? It's like, get, these people have no grip. I mean, why? it's disgusting, but whatever. Someone said most of them can't have a conversation. I mean, you know, to each their own. Uh, Barbara said, back in the Cold War, it was Russia that said they didn't have to conquer our country. They would just introduce socialism and we would destroy ourselves. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's it's already happening. Marxism is at the core of every... Th this is what the NASCAR thing is really about at the core of it, too, guys. What is NASCAR? It's the whitest, most conservative sport. So they've humiliated it. They've completely, in two weeks, done two different events. The first one, didn't really care that much about, but I knew it was a trap. The second one, they're, it's like a humiliation ritual. They want to destroy every institution, every sport, every company, every media organization. And they've done a good job. They have control over almost everything. And that's why I, I said in my last stream, it's on YouTube now where I was talking about the statues. I'm like, guys, even if Trump wins, there's nothing he can do. You have to do something. Like people just ride Trump's coattails and think he's going to save the world. 
Every institution is working against you. It's already happened. Every infiltration of Marxism and socialism and you know phony social justice, it's everywhere. There's, you can't name 10 companies that are aren't. So if you think winning the House or the Senate or the presidency is gonna save you, you're wrong. And if you think it's a guarantee, you're wrong as well because it's not looking hot right now. It'll change, but people are gonna have to save themselves. Someone asks, how do I open my church? I don't know, open it. How did Shelly Luther open her business? With a key, uh, you know, opened the door and started doing it until they arrested her. So I don't know. I'm not saying to do that, but there's a way to open the church. It's just open the doors and tell people to come. Someone said, why can't Don Lemon see the truth? At a certain point, it's spiritual. I talked about this in my Christian, Muslim, and Jew breakdown with my th my two buddies, but everybody makes mistakes. Everybody has flaws. Everybody has sins. Nobody's perfect. You know, that's a guarantee. So I'm not looking down on everybody because of their mistakes, but there's a difference in ideology right now that's really, you, you see two sides getting further apart from each other. And in a spiritual, psychological reasoning, the best way I could put it is, there's people who know that sinning and mistakes and things that they're doing, they, they, they know there's flaws, but they have the self-awareness to know that they're doing it. And even understanding your mistakes, trying to get better, even if you don't get better, understanding what you're doing wrong and admitting it and acknowledging it is a huge, huge step. And you see that, I'm not gonna make it political, but you see a group of people who do that. And then you go to the left wing, just to be quite honest, and what they're doing, they're not only making mistakes and flaws and sins, they identify as the flaw or the sin. So if you have an appetite, say you're overweight, it's not the biggest deal. Like, yeah, there's health consequences, but if you're overweight, it's understandable. Everybody gets overweight at some point, not everyone, but it's not the end of the world if you're overweight. But if you're overweight is your identity, like the left wing, now they're saying, that's who I am. I am this person. I am this sexuality. I am this sexual appetite. I am, I am this. I am that. They're identifying as things that aren't an identity. So they, it's not just that they're making mistakes or they're doing certain cravings that people, like the average person has. That's their entire identity. So when you identify as something wicked or you identify as something that's not desirable or you identify as something that should be a curbed appetite, whether it be sexually or you know, health-wise, you become a wicked person. You know, it's like, I'm not perfect, but I understand my mistakes, I work on it, I try to get better every year, and I at least acknowledge them. These people not only don't acknowledge them, they think their mistakes are their greatest assets, so it makes them wicked. Why is Don Lemon, you know, why doesn't he, he know he's a wicked person, you know, why? Because that's his ideology. He identifies as things he does sexually, it's his entire identity, and his whole political philosophy has now become make the right the wrong, the wrong the right, the true the false, the false the true, the good the bad, the bad the good, the I'm not racist but I am, like he's a lost man, you know, he needs God or he needs some sort of moral compass. I, 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 it's unbelievable that these people are acting like this. If you like universal healthcare, I understand that. If you think the welfare system's great, it's not, but if you think it's great, I understand that. If you think, uh, you know, cleaning the environment's good, it is good. If you believe in climate change, I understand why you do, but I don't understand, but I do what I just said, but the, this like how wicked they're getting where it's like you get caught, you know you're wrong, your dad knows you're wrong, and they still can't tell the truth because if you tell the truth, the whole thing shatters. And that helped me get to this point because it's like once you shatter, I did this when I grew up, I was never a Democrat, but I had a lot of left-wing dogmas that I believed in. And once I shattered one, I revisited all of them and they were all wrong. I'm not somebody who gets hyper-partisan, like I'm right wing now. A lot of conservatives do that. I'm Mr. Conservative now. And like they just become a liar on the right wing because they fly left to right and they just grab onto it and they're just nasty and mean and they become a hypocrite. But I just researched, I was like, well, what about the everything they believe is wrong. So they can't tell the truth because once you tell one truth, that then your whole reality shatters. For me, if I'm wrong, it's not a big deal. My reality is not being a liar. So if I'm wrong, I'm like, let me correct that, let me edit that, let me get this right, I make mistakes. But I try to watch what I say so I don't make mistakes. But if I do, 
it's not the end of the world. If they get caught with Russia Gate, with Ukraine Gate, with Bubba, Jesse, the protests, anything, Clinton, Hillary, Obama, they can't acknowledge it. One will slide off, you know? Every, everything that they're on, it's like a, a, a set of lies. I've never seen anything like it, it's, it's bizarre. But at the high levels, this is not random. Like you said, the communists in Russia and in other countries, they've been planning this since the 1900s. You know, they, un they understand at the high levels, these are not dumb people. These are like psychologists, you know, people who understand how the human mind works. They're able with stimuli to get you to do things you don't even know you're doing. Why do you buy certain water? Why do you buy certain products? You saw a commercial. There's psychology behind why you're attracted to the things that you've never had in your hands before. They've been doing this since the 1900s. They know racial division, emotions, exploitations, you know, using women and children in tragedies to stimulate an emotional response. They know separating the man from the women leaves both people weaker. Separating the kids from the family makes the kids weaker. Separating a husband from a wife and just having her be like a 40 year old feminist by herself is not gonna be as strong as a, a woman with a strong father figure or a strong husband or a brother. Or something. Like these are just common sense things, but people, they've, they've found a crafty way to skew it into people's minds to think that this isn't hat where it's like, no, this is for racism, this is for feminine. No, they've given a title and a false name, racism, sexism, anti-Semitism, xenophobiaism, Islamophobiaism, to make it an intersectional, uh, intersectional communist thing where it's like, Islam is nothing like feminism. It's just not, you know? You could be a Muslim who's not really a Muslim who's a feminist, that's fine, I don't care. Like drop the religious aspect of it, whatever, it's not up to me, but they're not the same. They bring it up, you're black, you're this, you're Hispanic. They're not the same. They bring you together under the guise of communism. If you're black and Hispanic and reject communism, or you're gay and you reject communism, or you're, uh, you know, what, Muslim and you reject communism, they hate you, because their movement's not about uniting, it's about communism. But it's not a communist society that everyone gets along. They don't get along, they hate each other. Look at what they do when they're left alone. You're this, you're oppressing me. They're, they're downward spiraling, narcissistic, egocentric, self-centered people who don't believe in hard work, accountability, the golden rule, judging people by their soul, their skin color. They're everything they claim to hate. And the people who don't get it, I don't feel bad for them anymore at this point. I'm just leaving them alone. I'm gonna go somewhere else where people aren't that ridiculous and they can destroy themselves because they're not gonna drag me down. Someone said, just like Jesse says, no more isms, JLP. Yeah, the, all those words are, are used to stop discussion, all of them. And this is why I can't mesh with the right wing that much because they use the word anti-Semitism all the time. I think there's people who hate Jewish people and white people for sure, but don't use the word all the time because then you become a liar, racism. Everything's racist. What's racist? Disagreeing with this. It's not racist. Racism, true racism is I hate all of these people. Who are the real racists nowadays? Who really hates everybody of a certain skin color? Fringe, fringe groups on the right, very few, and a lot of the left wing. They hate you because you're not the minority anymore. They are the real racists, but I don't even use that word because it's a exaggeration, you know? Racism, sexism. What is sexism? Believing that women are different from men, that's sexism. Believing that women can be housewives, that's sexism. Believing that women should be married and that might be a good idea, that's sexism. Disagreeing with the communists is what the words mean. There is no Islamophobiaism. What does that even mean? The, the, the liberals that use Islamophobic are not even Muslims and they don't even practice Islam. And the people who do practice Islam strictly don't agree with the liberals. So these people are just like egocentric, narcissistic, white savior types who just wanna latch onto everybody's community, but they can't even fix their own community. They can't fix Minneapolis. They can't fix San Francisco. They're destroying New York City. They've been destroying LA and you, yeah, and they just wanna just ruin everybody else's. So eventually people are gonna have to say, get away. You know, you have your space, leave us alone. And that's exactly what they don't want. You know, you can do whatever you want to your city, to your town, to your family, but leave me alone. And what do they do? They march around and try to burn your neighborhood and say they didn't do it. Oh no, no, they, they know what they're doing. These are wicked people.
Someone said prejudice is the word people mean, prejudging. Yeah, so it's a better word, yeah. There's, but prejudice for random prejudice is bad, like judging people's bad, but it's also just common sense in the sense of like, if you're walking down the street, you have prejudice towards who's coming based on how they're acting. If two white guys are acting like morons and just like acting all goony and stuff, you know, I'm gonna be like, all right, I'm, I don't wanna be on the same side of the street as them, or I'm gonna keep my eyes peeled. Has nothing to do with their skin color, has everything to do with how they approach themselves. So if you're in a neighborhood and there's a high crime rate and there's a lot of people of a certain ethnicity there, it doesn't mean you're racist and your prejudice is prejudging how you should act. Like if you go to a 7-Eleven in the heart of Los Angeles and you go to a 7-Eleven in the nicest suburb in California, it's not gonna be the same 7-Eleven. So you're an idiot if you don't think about it, you know? I mean, you know, it's like, ah, oh, I just treat them all the same. You don't see the seven crackheads on the ground that are like walking in and smashing like the big gulp against the thing trying to get free soda from, from the Indian owner. Like you don't notice the difference, no offense. Like it's okay to use your eyes. They think common sense is racist. Black people should have common sense and the ability to judge what's going on around them and with other people, other ethnicities. It's okay to like have a moral compass. They, they're like, they're the types like, I don't even notice anything. It's like, why? I notice the second I go to certain areas, I'm like, there's heroin addicts and crackheads all over the place. Like this is, this place sucks. Like, it's not like, oh, I, I don't even notice. They look like a man in a suit and tie to me. It's like, no, they don't. They're spiraling, spitting all over the place. And there's like a 30% chance they're gonna attack somebody in the next week. So might wanna look over your shoulder. Like that's not, it's just pretty, pretty common stuff. Jonathan said that's pretty offensive, no cap. I mean, what's offensive is what you make of it. Jonathan, if you if you walk into a 7-Eleven in a certain area and it's a crappy 7-Eleven, you'll notice the difference from a nice 7-Eleven. Same with the Taco Bell. It's not it's not offensive, it's just reality. Like, if you're on the south side of Chicago, I'm not saying you are, but in general, you ever watch a documentary of the kids on the south side of Chicago? They're constantly looking over their shoulder. Are they racist? No, they're looking over their shoulder because they know there's gang warfare there, and that's kind of the culture that's been built in certain areas, is like, watch your back, watch your house, watch your boys, I'm gonna watch mine. That's called human survival, that's instinct. So on a, on a same level, I don't judge people by skin color when I walk around, I judge people by how they present themselves and I'm not sorry about it. It's like, I don't walk around and judge it. Like if there's a woman that's got a smile on her face and just walking and jogging, I'm like, that's a nice woman. She's black, she's white, doesn't matter to me. If there's a crackhead woman, like I'm not looking at her like, oh yeah, like that's the same. I treat her as a human, a soul. I'm looking to help. I'm not saying I'm like, damn her to hell or something, but I notice a difference in, in energy, just like at night. So it's like, how do you present yourself? What's your energy like? If there's three friends that are talking, having a good time and vibing out, it doesn't matter that they're black, I'm not even remotely thinking about it. But if they're white or they're, and they're acting all goony, that's a difference. I mean, it's basic survival it's, you know, sense. I, I don't understand what's offensive. It's like a car. It's like a car driving the speed limit and a car swerving all over the place. Like. Are you gonna be equally worried about every car? No, you should, you know, every black, white, Hispanic, Asian, Indian, American person should pay attention. I don't know, it makes sense to me. I mean, I'll give, uh, someone said the 7-Eleven example, if you don't understand that, your virtue signaling. I mean, go to a jack-in-the-box in a decent area and then go to like, I, I've been to like the world's worst jack-in-the-box and you're like, this place sucks. I never wanna go here again. It has nothing to do with the race, has nothing to do with the demographics of the area, it has everything to do with just basic common sense. Like, I don't wanna be around seven crackheads and like five just people that are just looking for trouble. I don't know. Thank you, Stephen. 
Uh, Lori said, Lori said, I'm a school crossing guard and in order to keep the children safe, you have to watch people's behavior and not color. Of course. I'll give you an example. I'm, I'm, I'm with my friend yesterday playing a sport and this, cr this white crackhead came in and started screaming and spitting uh, at people on the court that they were playing on and just like wigging out. So it's like, are you not supposed to notice that? Like I, I notice crackheads and heroin addicts because they're not just begging for money. These are like psychopaths. They're attacking people, they're wigging out. They're on serious amounts of drugs and they're all over the city. So it's like, I, I, I don't even notice his color. No, he was white and his energy was crackhead. You know, so it's like, I don't even, I don't even notice the energy of people. I mean, everyone's the same. Someone's smiling, handing out water and a crackhead spitting on me. I can't even tell the difference. It just, it, like, I just say thank you and he spits in my face. Like, no, it's like, I notice immediately and I'm like, get this degenerate out of here. Someone said, I can't remember the last time I heard remarks about anti-Semitism. Everything's been drowned out by the current noise. I mean, if you follow enough right-wing Zionists, they'll, they'll use the word anti-Semitism every other week. Any, any talk about what they're doing is anti-Semitism to them. So follow more Zionist right-wingers and you'll hear the word anti-Semitism far too often. Someone said, Democrats want the police reform, but they're holding up Trump's bill. Yeah, I didn't read the bill, so I don't even know what it means. It's just a circus, guys. I mean, what what's a what what's the bill going to do? What are the what's what's the bill going to do, guys? Nancy Pelosi, no, I don't want the bill. I want the bill. It's like, guys, we need to be better people, okay? The police are a product of who we are. The police are corrupt, people are corrupt. Taco Bell workers can be shitty. You know, academians are going insane. The media sucks. Sports are losing their minds. Like I'm supposed to think that oh, the only the police are bad and the rest of our country is just perfect. If we just get, if Trump can just get the police in line, this country is going to settle itself out. No, guys, this whole country is going to shit. If anything, police are the net sum of what we are, which is subpar. So blaming them for everything and Trump caving to them and passing a bill, it's not going to stop what's going on because it's not getting to the root of what's going on, which is us. We suck. Okay. So stop blame, stop scapegoating them for every single thing. And like, there's businesses being torn down, churches are being burned, and, and they're, they're the number one problem. Guys, it's a joke. More people will die in the next day from the, the products that they sell you on television than the police will probably kill in the next two years. And no one's going to care. No one's going to say anything about it. There's op fentanyl coming through drugs, just killing tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people all the time, and no one cares because they can't figure out what's going on. We're being murdered with fentanyl and no one cares. It's not a, a drug you would cut something with like, oh, let's spread it out. It's a thin drug. It's assassination and it's happening to our country to kids who do drugs and no one cares. So spare, spare my, oh, well, Trump and Nancy are fighting over police reform. Who cares? This is why the Republicans can't get anything done. Pence is like, Juneteenth is an important, no one cares, Pence. No one's gonna look at Mike Pence and be like, wow, you know, I was, I was marching, I was marching for my rights, and then Mike Pence tweeted about Juneteenth, and I thought, you know, I'm no longer a black Marxist or a white liberal. I'm a Republican, because if Mike Pence can tweet about Juneteenth, what else can he do? No one cares. It's like, it's just a total joke. Man, I, I didn't I didn't think the holiday was real until Mike Pence said it was, and now it's like I'm a I'm a devout Christian and I, I'm voting. For... Glenn said the the police problem has a lot to do with the lowering of standards to become a police officer, a thousand percent. And what else have we lowered the standards of in this country? everything it's not just the police you lower the standards of the police you get crappier polices you have unions protecting crappy police officers you get crappier police officers the same thing's happening with every aspect of our country our whole country is deteriorating every single aspect of it the wealthy areas are getting slightly worse the crappy areas are going to get stay the same 
the middle class areas are going to be dragged down into the crappy areas. The whole country is going to crap because of an ideology that's taken over everything, including NASCAR, which is not content of character. Of course, the police are going to suck. Of course, it's easy to get in. What's not easy to get in? Schools are Boeing, diversity quotas. Get the best people to build the planes, bro. I don't care if they're black, Asian, or Indian. If they were all Indian and Asian, I would not care for a single second. If they're building the best planes, get at them. We don't need these rules to allow everybody to do everything. Like, well, they're not allowed to switch their gender in the military. You're not allowed to have certain heart diseases and be in the military. You're not allowed to be certain physical in the in, in the in the in the military. It's not it's not a Chuck E. Cheese. It's not a it's not a party. It's the military. You know, like I don't understand this like level of weakness. It's embarrassing. Like I don't. I don't want the job if I'm not good enough. I don't need people, we're bending backwards over for everybody and destroying everything. Get the best people there. Help people that are disadvantaged, but not by destroying everything. So people are scapegoating the police force for having weak laws and strong unions and weak you know, recruitment tactics, but that's our whole country. It's like uh, Lil Wayne said it perfect. He's like, I think it's us. We need to change ourselves. And they're like, oh, Lil Wayne's a racist white guy now. It's like, no, he knows that it's not just the police. Yeah, the police are failing because the whole country is failing. What the police ha is happening, it's us. It's us. And Trump's bill is going to do nothing. He's He's been pathetic these last three months. I'm sorry. You look at him in the election odds, and, and you got to understand that I'm not talking about the polls, and this is not be all end all. Trump is just going down and down and down and down because he's not doing anything. He's like, well, I'll pass a police reform bill on Juneteenth. Who's that impressing? Who who likes that? No, law and order tweet for the 50th time. The tweet doesn't do anything, dude. If you can't do it, just say you can't do it. But, you know, at a certain point, it's like the, the left wing sets the rules, the right wing tries to cave, and then the left gets mad at them, and then people think it's going to matter. You could pass a 10,000 page police reform bill. It's not going to save this country. It's not going to fix the police. They have a lot of other, we need a whole ideology shift in this country. Uh, here's a good question. Colton said, Anomaly, what's your take on trying to literally bail out poverty? Seems people lean on the argument that poverty creates crime and poverty is systemically racist. Well, it's a good, it's a good question. I think in general, there's ways to, you know, it's a, it's tricky. I'll say this, outside of obviously there's historical stuff I'll get into later, but the whole idea of like, say like communism or getting everybody to an equal playing field. Think about a basketball team. Think about Michael Jordan, me, you, uh, Charles Barkley. We're all on the same basketball team. We're never going to be equal. We're never going to be, I'm never gonna be as good as Charles Barkley. I'm never gonna be nowhere near as good as uh, Michael Jordan. So in, in order to get us on the same playing field, you would have to break Michael Jordan's knees. You'd have to break Charles Barkley's knees and you'd have to injure them to the point they were as shitty as I was at basketball. I'm pretty good, but not nearly as good as them. They'd, I'd have to make them as bad as me to be equal. That's why you see the communist decline because there's no way to drag everyone up to the highest common denominator. It's just not possible. And capitalism is crony at this point and it's a sham communist system anyway with a central bank, but in ideology, a free market is innovative. And then, you know, you bring the, 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 the lower class goes higher, the middle class goes higher, the upper class goes higher, and you bring each other up, but you can't bring the bottom tier of society to the top tier. It's just not possible. I can't become Michael Jordan no matter how hard I try. It's, it's just not possible. So on that note, with that's outside of historical context. With historical context, there's people who've been wronged in the past, systemically burdened. There has to be a real plan to get them out of this. And in many ways, the welfare system is a trap just like it was during the CARES Act. The CARES Act was a welfare system for Republicans. Now, you know, you complain about, you know, black communities and you complain about poor whites on welfare. Now, the government just put us all on welfare with the CARES Act. They did a $6 trillion bill, told you to stay home and sent you a Trump buck. What is that? That's welfaring me and you and everybody. So that system is a system of control and taming and just like bottom tier depend on the government. What you'd have to do is drag people out with a, a plan. 
I'm not saying Trump is perfect, but he had a plan, opportunity zones, putting businesses, giving them tax incentives to go to certain areas where there aren't jobs, you know, educating people, real education, and also a mindset shift on top of that. So jobs, resources, things that Nip Nipsey Hussle was doing before he got murdered, which was bringing STEM and, you know, programming to inner city areas, teaching them skills and science and math and programming so they could get those jobs. It has to come systemically. But the problem is with this is the left wing will not allow it. They want that weak class, just like they always have. They've always been these people. They want you there so they can say that they're there, so then they can say that they could help you. It's, it, it's a never ending cycle. So we can never get to the point of helping the poor and the inner cities, because what they're doing is dragging everybody down. The poor is not getting richer, and the, the rich are certainly not getting poor as far as the Warren Buffetts and the Zuckerbergs. They're crushing right now, okay, during the shutdown. But it would have to be a really smart approach to how to raise poverty. But the reality of it is you can help people to a certain point to achieve all that they can do, but you can't inherently make everybody get to a certain point. So on that note, uh, it reminds me of like the homeless situation. Then I'll move on. I want to help everybody. I want to help every community, every homeless person. But at a certain point, why are they homeless? How many of these people need help? How many of them are mentally ill? How many of them are on drugs? How many of them chose that life and no matter how much I help them will not rebel from it? I don't know those answers, but I would have to calculate that and then I'd have to figure out the right steps to take. But this is the reality of why LA is becoming this way. It's not just a financial issue because in many ways this was already happening even with stronger economy and more jobs available than people needing them. LA allows it. It's like a kid that you let do anything. So they allow it, they sanction it, they put you know areas for you, they give you money, they don't force you out of it. And if I was the mayor or the you know governor, I would say, I'm gonna help you. you. Absolutely, I'm gonna help everyone. But you can't do this. I'm not gonna allow the Mexican kids that have to walk through school, they shouldn't have to walk through seven crackheads and five heroin addicts who are dangerous to get to school. I care about the Hispanic family. I care about the white, the black family that has to deal with this stuff. LA doesn't do that. So that's the difference to poverty and homelessness. What they don't understand is they think that they can just allow people to run rampant and it's gonna get better. But what it's gonna do is it's gonna turn nice areas into crappy areas, crappy areas into crappier areas. Downtown is growing because they have no strategy or plan. So it has to be a plan of helping people, giving them the right resources, but then a no a no tolerance policy for like crime and horrible stuff, you know? Be like, we're gonna give you all the resources, but you can't do this. What do they say now? You can do it. You wanna do that? They don't protect anybody. They don't protect the kids. They don't protect the family. They don't protect the taxpayer. They don't protect the black community. They don't protect the Hispanic community. They don't protect the white community. They do nothing. All the Democrats do is lie, invert reality, talk about you know their feelings, say everything's racist. They're like the, the no different in my opinion, ideologically, than the Democrats of the 1900s. What did they do back then? They were pressuring people who believed in conservative ideology. They were pressuring the Republican Party. They were pressuring black intellects like you know Booker T. Washington or you know ones way after him as well into agreeing with them. And you look at Jim Crow, you look at all the stuff that they passed, all, all of these wicked institutions, and it was all about control. And as soon as they lost control physically, they started controlling people mentally. And you look at hip hop culture, one of the most damaging things, I'm just gonna say it as a hip hop artist, is urban culture. And it wasn't always like that. It was a ploy, in my opinion, to destroy people in general. Hip hop started as a positive thing, dancing, b-boying, partying. You look at the origins of hip hop, it's all positive, it's all love, it's all uplifting because that's what hip hop is and that's what hip hop was, was uplift your community, do art, do, do graffiti, do this stuff, but it was creative, it was positive, it was dancing. And then you had NWA and these other things and then the label said, we only want this gangster rap music, that's all we want. And now you look at the minds of the masses in the suburbs and in the cities, they think that's cool. What do they think is cool? Murder, drugs, pills, Xanax, like that's what they're telling kids are cool. This whole culture is toxic and they've convinced people that that's who they are. 
And that's the biggest lie. You listen to Larry Elder, even Candace Owens, she might bother people sometimes, but you listen to the crux of what she's trying to say, or Brandon Tatum, I get to some people they might be off-putting, but you listen to the crux of what they're saying is, it's a mindset thing. If they can tell you this is who you are, this is your culture, and if you stray away from that, you're an Uncle Tom, or you're this name, or you're that name, and they give you all sorts of names, what does that mean? You wore a suit, you worked hard, you got into school without playing the victim, you came against all consequences to succeed, that's what that word means, but it's cool and trendy and natural. It's your natural habitat to be a degenerate or a liar or be a rapper who talks about absolutely nothing and then millions of kids listen to that and think that's a good lifestyle for them. And then you listen to the rapper in the interview and he doesn't even drink alcohol or do the pills he says he does. This is a huge problem even outside of finance and you know system. That's systemic racism. The culture that the liberal has brainwashed people for 30 years that's into every ethnicity all over the world it's destroying the islamic world it's it's going to destroy japan as well they all all of them think this stuff's cool and all of the all of the um mindsets in place whether it be in islam or in japan that have kept them a clean functioning society will eventually deteriorate because you can't it's it's a net sum of what everyone thinks and does and they've They've done that. So when it comes to poverty and that type of stuff, it's a multi-pronged solution. But if you look at every wicked thing that's holding people down, I'm not saying the Republicans are great. I'm not saying that they're better than useless, but it is the Democratic Party, the liberal media, and the liberal hive mind that is holding people back on every level, systemically, financially, politically, you know, uh, culturally, Mindset wise, it's all of their lies because they don't look and this is the thing that people don't get I will help people I will talk about history I will talk about the lies that happened in America I'll talk about all that and I'll help people who have been crushed in the past However, the liberal never wants you to be an equal They don't want to look at you as an african-american and say you're better than me or you're stronger than me It's actually a slave master type mentality that they have where they say I'm here Everyone else is here. You're Hispanic. You need my help. You're black. You need my help. Why do they get so mad at Candace Owens? Why do they get so mad at Brandon Tatum? Why do they get so mad at Larry Elder? Why do they not like Thomas Sill? Why do they hate Ben Carson so much? It's because he's not one of them. He's smart. He's educated. He doesn't want help. And they hate that because they want you to be dependent on them. These are wicked people. Ben Carson was a neurosurgeon who came from the hood. They hate him. Trevor Noah makes fun of him. They all make fun of him. They, they're trying to take his school away. He's got some sort of institution named after him. They're trying to take it away because he works with the president. This is how wicked these people are. You're only a black man if you're into our degenerate culture. If you rap about guns, drugs, murder, you know, go to jail 15 times, you're our hero. If you're Ben Carson, you're a neurosurgeon, and you work for the president of the United States, a conservative from the party, uh, you know, that according to history, freed, freed the slaves, fought against the KKK, the same party that freed everybody, that overturned all the negativity, the same party that passed the First Step Act, just did prison reform during Trump's era, did opportunity zones with the help of Jim Brown and other black leaders to get jobs to inner city areas. If you align yourself with him, even if you're a neurosurgeon, even if you're a nice guy, we're gonna take away from you. These are still the wicked slave masters. Nothing has changed. Every systemic thing that's going on leads back to him, Le leads back to them. It's disgusting how they act. And these are scrawny, you know, uh, you know, wicked, self-hating, or just narcissistic, egotistical, you know, spoiled, rotten, many times, privileged, white liberals who think they need to help you. They look, so, they think so lowly of you, you can't get an ID, you can't believe in low taxes, you can't like the Second Amendment, you can't like the president, you can't disagree with Don Lemon. That's how lowly they think of you. Like you're, you're dysfunctional. And the reason they think that of you is because that's how they built people to be for the last 60 years. Because once physical slavery was not allowed for all ethnicities in this country, they wanted to figure out a way to mentally enslave you. And that's what the media is, is mind control media. It's wicked wicked what they do every single day it's fear 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 negativity racism you're weak you're oppressed you're doing it guys left wingers have done more damage to this country to institutions to churches to statues to businesses 
people with a left wing, no right wingers were involved, guys. No right wing people are in the streets doing any of this stuff. And the FBI and all these groups are saying right, right wing terrorism's on the rise, it's their fault. These people are never gonna stop. It's in every intelligence community, every institution, every media source, every company. It's, uh, it's disgusting. And it's gonna take people standing up, calling it out, and it's like they'll invert reality. There could be a million people doing this and you could be standing there eating a sandwich and they'll say, he's killing the sandwich and there's right-wing terrorism on the rise and we're protesting and coronavirus goes down when we gather, but if you try to stand up for the First Amendment, then you're the devil. These are wicked, wicked demons. And the more you call them out, the more, it'll be like an exorcism, they'll be like, ah! And they'll come out and they'll be like, oh, I'm sorry. I don't know what got into me for those five years. I'll, I'll stop watching CNN. I'm like, all right, it's about time. All right, I got 10 more minutes and then I'm going to take off. I'm going to say every, they don't want to listen. People will listen, but if they don't, you just got to leave them alone. You just got to leave them alone. Someone said, I recommend the documentary. Yeah, it's a great documentary. Am I a vegan? No, sorry. Sorry to break your heart. All right. I, I went a little overboard. Someone said, uh, not overboard, but over on time. All right, we'll just, we'll just keep it on that note. Appreciate you guys. God bless you. God bless your family. God bless America. God bless the world. I just want to let you know for the live streams when they disappear, um, I move them onto YouTube and BitChute. So find my YouTube and BitChute channel if you want to watch my live streams. I'll probably keep the Christian Muslim Jew one up for a couple days. It's phenomenal. But I'm always a little bit hesitant because Facebook's been good to me uh, so far, and I like to keep it that way. So... I don't know what bothers them now every day. Everything, me breathing is probably a hate crime to them. They want me to stop breathing or something. But, you know, I try to be as safe as I can. So I usually let these play for 48 hours, 24 hours or so. And if you see it disappear while you're watching it or others, just go to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash anomaly hip hop. But if you search anomaly, you'll find my YouTube channel. You can watch most of the streams there if you want to watch them again. Replay value, I think of it like a live sport. You watch it live and then it disappears. You can find it on you know, Amazon or something a year later. So that's where we're at. God bless you guys. I appreciate it. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow with uh, more stuff or the next day.